I am a little early, so I'm just gonna wait one minute before I get started to let some people come and join us. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about shadow work. This is an introduction to shadow work so that those of you that don't know what it is can understand it a little bit better so that you can use it in order to level up your personal life as well as your professional life. So I'm just gonna wait here. Um, but you guys know I like to get started right on time because most of you watch the replay. All right, so it's 12. <laughs> All right, so intro to shadow work. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I've been getting a lot of inquiries um, with personal coaching and a lot of comments in my DMs about those of you that want to move forward, but for whatever reason you feel like you can't, you don't believe in yourself, you don't have confidence. Hey, Jenny, <laughs> you don't have the confidence to do what it is that you need to do. Or maybe you have these blocks holding you back where you don't fully step into your power in life and you don't really know why. In not only the spiritual community, you may hear this in this, this term used in the spiritual community, shadow work, but technically it is a psychological term. And shadow work just means that there are parts of yourself that you are unaware of. A lot of times because there are these things in our life that keep us down, such as fear, anxiety, self-doubt, lack of confidence, um, lack of self-worth, um, anger, a lot of things like that, you may perceive or may see people talking about shadow work in a negative light um, because unwillingly, unknowingly, unconsciously, those are typically things that hold us back. However, you can also think about shadow work very positively. And this may um, surface when you're looking at people and you wish you could do what they do. You feel like they're more eloquent than you. Um, they have more confidence than you. So you put them on a pedestal and you almost give them this celebrity like status for doing some of the things in life that if you believed in yourself, you would be capable of. And I want you to really understand this about shadow work because not a lot of people talk about this. They talk about the negative side of shadow work because that is a lot of what holds us back. But a lot of people fail to see that if you put somebody on a pedestal like a Tony Robbins or like a I or anything like that um, because there's something you like about them or admire about them or wish that you could have, that also means that there's a shadow somewhere in you that you may want to examine because perhaps you have some of those traits. You have that self-confidence. You have that ability to inspire and to do some of the things that your mentors and your idols and the people that you look up to do, but you also repress that side of yourself. So number one, when you're thinking about shadow work, think about shadow work as not only those negative things that a lot of people, a lot of coaches, um, psychological um, experts focus on, but also think about some of the positive things. As a side note, I'm going to be starting a membership very soon. I didn't release this yet to anybody, but one of the things that I'm going to be walking them through is some of the seven aspects of discord that bring down your energy. So what are these seven aspects of shadow of you that you let hold you back from um, moving and stepping into your power? That's one of the things that we're going to talk about, but as a side note. All right. So your shadow is also subconscious or unconscious. And I really want you to listen to this also, because I don't think that people are aware of this. When you let your shadow run the show, when you approach life from limits and negativity and fear and self doubt and um, saying that you're going to do things, but you don't have a lack of integrity or you don't have integrity about doing the things that you need to do, you're dishonoring, uh, a part of yourself that you need to examine in order to move forward. And whenever you are ignoring your shadow, which is part of your subconscious or your unconscious, you're also ignoring the most powerful parts of who you are and the most powerful things that you need to examine in order to move forward and in order to manifest greatness in your life. And I'm going to tell you why. So think about this, your subconscious and your unconscious is tied to many different things, such as your intuition that you tend not to honor and you tend not to trust when you don't have the self-awareness to go in and do that deep work, looking at your subconscious, looking at your unconscious and taking clues and notes and growing from that place. 
The second thing, not only do you have access to your intuitive abilities, there is this more powerful energy that I talk to my clients about and teach them how to tap into all the time. And some people may call it the Akashic Records, but if you're not into spirituality, you may have heard it called something like um, infinite intelligence or infinite wisdom, which just means that not only do you have a tap to the um, to yourself, which is divine, but you also have a tap to divine energy through God and through the energy that we all share together that we can tap into at any time that is more powerful than our own energy um, when we're just trying to do things alone. So when you fail to do shadow work, you are failing to really go deep into the depths of who you are and use that not only for growth, evolution, and power, but also truly tap into that infinite wisdom, Akashic records, um, that divine power that can help propel you forward more than you can do it on your own. And that's where miracles take place. That's where things that you could never imagine take place. But in order to do that, it requires you to be willing to go there both good and bad. Okay. So let's talk about how you develop this shadow. And I want you guys to understand this too. Hey, Michelle, I want you to understand this because people don't understand this. And as a coach that focuses on personal mastery, this burns me up. The same thing with the inner child. The inner child and the shadow work term are metaphors. They are not real, um, tangible things. So shadow work is a metaphor for limiting beliefs, for the conditioning that you go through from your parents, from society, from circumstances that you've been through that have changed the way that you approach life. Usually it's through repressing sides of yourself, repressing all of who you are, suppressing all of who you are and not showing up fully, authentically who you are and with a lack of integrity because you failed to live authentically in life. I want you to understand that because when you think of it as a metaphor, you start to understand that once you find your inner child, you don't have an inner child anymore. If you are living a life of awareness and reflection, it is now just a part of yourself that you needed to heal that came from something that had to do with the inner child metaphor. Same with shadow work. Once you are aware of a part of yourself that you repressed and uh, you uncovered, it's no longer a shadow. And so at that point, it's up to you to start to integrate things in your life in order to level up, in order to transcend that shadow and in order to do better. It's not saying that other little things will pop up that you'll have to deal with from time to time. But when people are constantly in a state of doing shadow work, sometimes I'm just, I'm just telling you this because I see this with my clients. Sometimes they get stuck in a cycle in a loop that they always have to be undigging stuff, which puts you in the cycle of, I need to learn. I need to consume. I need to, um, do reflection. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but you also need to act. And if you are taking in all this information about shadow work, inner child, any of this kind of stuff, and you're not doing something with it, then you are not learning. So once you uncover this metaphor for the shadow that you have inside of yourself, you do have shined a light on it. So to me, that's not a shadow anymore. And I want you to be really clear about the fact that shadow work is a metaphor for truly what is happening in your life with the limiting beliefs, the things that keep you down subconsciously, the things that you may not have been aware of. Um, and usually it's conditioning. So I want to tell you a little story that happened to me. It's a very simple story, but I can tell you very succinctly and very subtly how this energy can impact your life. There were like many, many years ago, at least a decade or two ago, I went to this Christmas party and they were doing this thing like, you know, a scavenger hunt. Like if you found something in your purse or has something near you and you found it, you will win a prize. So they were like the person with the oldest receipt in their purse. If you can present it, you will win this prize. And I was digging through my purse and I actually had a receipt that was like super old. I don't know why. So I got excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to win a prize. Now we all get caught up in exciting moments when we're going to win stuff, when we're having fun. However, for some reason, when I pulled out my receipt and I went up to the podium to claim my prize, 
and I was excited. I wasn't inappropriate. I wasn't pushing people down, just normal excitement. Um, one of the ladies said to me, you need to calm down. And it impacted me. It was really weird. Even to this day, when I think about that, it really impacted the way that I sh showed up, showed up, <laughs> showed up in life. So meaning from there on out, whenever I got excited in public, I would tone myself down. I would be like, well, <coughs> last time, oh, excuse me, guys. So I would say, well, last time I got chastised for being excited, for showing emotion. Um, even though I didn't feel I was doing anything wrong, they told me that I was a little bit too excited. So I would tone myself down a lot in public. I did not show a lot of excitement, emotion, and I kind of would be overly uptight and overly reserved because of the conditioning or the way that I received that comment and let it impact how I showed up in life authentically. And I'm telling you this story because for some of us, it's not really big things that happen in life. It's small, subtle, little things, especially as a child. This is right. This is wrong. Don't do that. You're overreacting. You shouldn't do this. You should do that. That impacts the way that we show up going forward in life and whether we know it or not, we start to chip away at who we are authentically and it impacts the way that we move forward in life. And so it took me a long time to be comfortable and to get out of that and to heal from something so small that somebody told me and to be comfortable again, knowing that if something is as exciting is going on, I can be excited. And I know that you guys can probably think of something that has happened to you similarly, where something, someone, something you've been through, something that somebody said is probably still impacting you today. And that is how a shadow is born. And that is why I'm saying also that for as much as I want you to recognize this, that it's a metaphor, it doesn't mean that you don't do continuous work to evolve, but I don't want you to get stuck in the shadows that you've shine light, shown a light on. I want you to learn how to move past those. I'll give you some tips in a second. I want you to also recognize the impact that it can have on your life if you don't tap into that subconscious, unconscious part of who you are in order to do this shadow work, in order to then be able to accept yourself more fully and then, like I said, tap into that divine energy. Your, your shadow will always be there. So you can repress it, you can suppress it, you can ignore it, you can try to change it, you can try to fit in a little bubble that people want you to fit in, you can try to do the things that people want you to do. The problem is when you aren't accepting all of who you are and you aren't living authentically and you are ignoring a part of who you are, even if it may be a more darker side of who you are, it still shows up. It shows up in the way that you approach your relationships. It shows up in the way that you approach your career. Maybe you want to go for a promotion, but you think, oh, you know what? Management is too hard or it's boring or I can't be a manager or all they do is just push papers. I need to be here just doing all the grunt work. It can show up in so many little subtle ways that you don't even understand the way that it holds you back. For those of you that um, have your own business, because I can see there's a few of you that either want your own business or actively pursuing your own business, it can show up as, I'm not good at sales, I'm not good at marketing. What else have I seen? Um, she seems to be able to do things better than I do or easier than I do. I, I know I'm gonna have to take the hard road or I'm gonna have to hustle. All of these things negatively impact you and especially if you have a lack of awareness for when you t um, switch over to your shadow self and show up as that shadow self versus when you step into your power. This is a constant exercise in life. The, the term conscious and the term woke doesn't mean that you learned a fact and now you're woke. 
What true woke and true consciousness means is that every day you are engaged in activities of self-reflection on a path of personal mastery so that you can recognize when your shadow shows up or when the best parts of yourself show up and you can learn to have more self-discipline and self-regulate when parts of you show up and you not let them run the show. However, you do recognize that they're there and you don't suppress them or you don't repress them. You grow from them. So your shadow is always there. And because it's usually in the form of all those negative things that I talked about, like fear, anxiety, doubt, depression, anger, then it usually impacts your life negatively. You may be somebody that talks about people behind their back or um, you may feel like you're not jealous or maybe you are. Maybe you do get jealous when you see somebody doing something that you wish you could do. And again, it may not be negative. You may just see somebody shining their light. And instead of you taking that inspiration and shining your light, you put them on a pedestal as your guru or your mentor or your guide or whatever. And then what happens too, we've done it with a lot of people. When we find out they're human, we get disappointed in them or we disown them or we don't deal with them anymore. Especially I'm talking about the people that you've put on a pedestal because you don't realize that they are human just like you and they have negative and positive just like you. If you have people like that in your life, they're meant to inspire you. Another way that your shadow can show up, especially if you're not willing to do the work, is through defense mechanisms and unhealthy coping. So again, if you're in relationship circumstances, situations, and maybe you adopt things like procrastination, imposter syndrome, all of those things, these are defense mechanisms and terms and they're unhealthy coping skills for you. Um, oh, another one guys, not procrastination, but you do a whole bunch of stuff, meaning that you do a lot of detail stuff, but you don't do stuff in your life that truly adds value in your career that adds value in your relationships that add value in your business that add value. You just do all of the things and what that usually is, is also your shadow stopping you from working on the things that you need to work on. Like if you don't feel like you're ready for a promotion, what do you need to do to get that promotion? What do you need to do to be more confident in your business? If you feel like you're not excelling the way that you need to, what do you need to do to excel in your personal life? If you feel like your relationship is not where it needs to be, you focus on them and you may nitpick and be hypercritical, but what do you need to change about yourself in order to inspire the relationship toward greatness? Those are some of the things that I'm talking about when I say defense mechanisms and unhealthy coping. So benefits of shadow work. So that's the impact of not doing the shadow work. The benefits of doing the shadow work is personal mastery. That's the number one thing that I do with my clients is I teach them how to do self-reflection, a lot of self activities, a lot of um, things that are self-involved in order for them to become better um, from the inside, because that is what truly changes life from the outside. When you know yourself, when you accept all parts of who you, you are and are able to show up authentically and unabashedly in who you are, you also are tapping into intuition. You also are tapping into infinite intelligence, infinite wisdom, Akashic records, whatever you want to call it. And all that stuff gives you more creativity, more clarity. You are more authentic. You have more energy because you're not wasting it not being yourself. You know how much energy you waste when you do things or engage in circumstances that are not authentic to who you are. So once you start to do the shadow work, you gain more energy, you gain more clarity. You also start to attract more opportunities. Whenever you are being authentic, you are walking the path that you are meant to walk. You will start to align more with your purpose, the more authentic you are. So opportunities open up. Not only that, you're able to hear your intuition, which will help be your guiding light or your North star as you navigate life. And then secondly, that infinite intelligence, that infinite wisdom is also going to give you insights, going to have synchronicities pop into your life and all of the other things that you need to do and align with in order to level up in life and love <laughs> if you're being yourself 
the the way that you attract true love in your life is by finding somebody or attracting somebody or being with somebody that is an energetic match for who you are and until you can embrace yourself do the shadow work transcend the parts that you don't like evolve from the parts that hold you back and not let that run the show true love will elude you because you're gonna be an energetic match for somebody that is a match for your shadow and not the best parts of yourself not your authentic self so I really want you to think about that and again some of the things that you may go through in circumstances and relationships are due to that fact I said a lot I'm gonna ask you if you have any questions but first I just want to close out and just tell you how you can fix some things that you can do to fix it I think I have five things that I want to share with you so that you can begin to dive more deeply into your shadow in order to do the work that you need to do to start to approach life not with that shadow not let that shadow run the show you know the shadow is there but you're showing up in your power authentically and creating magic in your life so the first thing is grace and forgiveness you have to forgive the parts of yourself that maybe didn't show up the way that you wanted to or maybe you might get angry because you notice that you've lived a life through the conditioning and through the lens of somebody else be it society parents what have you and that makes you angry because you feel like you wasted a lot of time or you didn't live your life for you or maybe like me you decided that um somebody said that they didn't like who you are and you let that impact the way that you showed up no matter what it is, you need to have grace and you need to forgive yourself. That is the first step. We all have things about us that we need to grow and we need to evolve from and they're all going to be different. But the reason why we have those things is so that if we adopt a life of personal mastery where we're continuously trying to evolve and be a better human, these things are there to teach us lessons, to help us grow, to help us become a, a better people. And so I want you to learn how to not be so hard on yourself for what happened in the past, not live in the past, not weave your future with all the things that happened in the past, the, the thread from the past, and just learn how to move forward from where you are now with more self-awareness and self-reflection and just do the best that you can so that's the first thing you need to do is have grace with yourself forgive yourself the way that you may have grace and forgive other people and the people that did condition you if you have any ill will toward them forgive and have grace with them as well because again now you know we all have this shadow part of our life that we tend to let run the show the second thing is personal mastery everything that i do everything that i teach from astrology to tarot to all the spiritual tools up to the identity shifting that i teach my private clients so that they can make exceedingly fast impactful permanent transformations is all about personal mastery so that means when are you going to decide that again you're not somebody that is saying that you want a better life or you're not somebody that wants to um, have all of these different things so you get all the data but you're not learning you're not assimilating you're not gaining wisdom and you're just having stuff without making changes again are you truly learning which means that you're putting the things that you have experienced, the things that you have read, the things that you watch, the things that you consume, are you putting them into practice? And through practice, are you willing to recognize that there may be some ups and downs in life, but where you evolve and grow and really gain that level of self mastery is through the wisdom. And the wisdom means that you're putting the learning into action, but then you're reflecting on it to see that it impact my life positively or negatively. Am I impacting other people positively or negatively? How can I tweak? How can I grow? How can I get better? That's where wisdom comes from. So until you are willing to do that, you're going to find that you have a lot of what I call, I wouldn't even call it awareness. I would call it knowledge. You have a lot of knowledge about yourself. You have a lot of knowledge about the world, about facts, about spirituality, about all of this. But do you truly have awareness and learning and wisdom? And that's where personal mastery will take you. 
The other thing that will help you, so this is the third thing that'll help you, is increased consciousness. Again, increased consciousness is not a one-time process where you become, where you have knowledge of something, it's highlighted, a light is shown on it, but you don't do anything with it. It is a constant process. And the things that I teach my clients and you can look into are things like self-inquiry, um, self-reflection, rewriting. So this is like re revision, revision of the day, revision of things that happened to you in the past. Um, self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? How can you change the way you talk to yourself? Those are some things that fall under increased consciousness. And also when you have the increased consciousness, again, how are you putting that into action so that you live a life full of more learning and more wisdom? Meaning, are you showing up as your shadow? You might know about your shadow. You might know things that keep you from excelling in life. A lot of times we do kind of know a little bit of it, but are you taking it one step further to not let that thing, that thing or that person or that issue run the show? Um, another thing that just came to me and then it just slipped. Oh, it'll come to me again. Oh, I also teach my clients a lot too. When they have an initial assumption about something, I have them do a self-reflective exercise called the wise. And that just helps them dig a little bit deeper because oftentimes what you think you want on the surface, like um, I think I've had Michelle do this before, what you think you want on the surface is often not what you really want or not the, why you're really doing the things that you do negatively or positively. So when you start to do self-reflection about the things that are going on in different areas of your life, love, career, finances, etc. And if especially they're not where you want them to be, keep asking yourself why. Keep digging deeper because something more deep, darker, subconscious is going to pop up and that is where you're going to work from and approach life so that you can truly make changes that create transformation in your life. Um, the fifth thing that you need to do, one, two, three, four, five. Fifth thing that you need to do, I think it's about five, is you need to have integrity. A lot of people lack integrity. So the first thing that I think about integrity is you may know that you're somebody that when you are in a certain situation, you have anxiety, you have self-doubt, you have fear. I don't necessarily think that you need to ignore that or that you need to fight hard to get over that. I just think that you need to know that it's there and accept it, but again, be able to transcend that and not act from that space. So integrity to me means that you're able to accept yourself for who you are, the good and the bad. But then the second thing about integrity is learning how to identify where you have limiting beliefs and conditioning in certain areas and learning how to do the work that you need to do to be able to shift past those things in order to grow and evolve and create better for yourself. So integrity. Two more things and then I am done. I'll ask for questions and, and we'll just go from there. So then journaling. Um, and I, you guys know, I'm like really left brain, not the emo right brain person, although I could tap into it. Journaling for me, if you really want to learn about yourself, if you really want to understand the people around you, the world around you, remember how I talked to you guys about the law of man, the laws of man versus the laws of the universe. Journaling for me is not, you take a pen, dear diary, this is how I feel today or um, things like that. I journal scientifically. I journal for data. I journal for patterns and trends. So when I'm journaling anything, whether it be every day when I pull my tarot cards, I don't just pull them and then journal about them and not go back and reflect. Was I actually right? How could I read my cards better? Did this situation really happen the way that I thought? So that's how I journaled to be a better tarot reader when I was really trying to learn my craft and hone my craft and I still do that today. When I'm journaling in a notebook about some things that I want to happen or things that I'm going 
going through. I'm not journaling as catharsis to just get stuff out on paper. I'm journaling scientifically to see how am I impacting people? How are these relationships unfolding? Where is it that I need to change? What did I do that wasn't um, authentically me? Where do I need to find clarity? And I'm continuously going back like a scientist, looking at the things that are happening in my life and trying to transmute the negative things that I don't like in my life and trying to see patterns for when I ex ex experience positive things in my life in order to be a better person that is the way i teach clients how to journal for anything intuition whatever because at the end of the day yes it may feel good to get some stuff out and get some stuff on paper but aside from that is it helping you grow is it helping you truly make change and transformation in your life? And if it's not, I want to encourage you to add another layer to your journaling that is a little bit more scientific, a little bit more in line with alchemy, which is taking stuff that is of a lesser quality and making it more quality, um, evolving, growing. That's the kind of journaling that I like to teach. And that's the kind of journaling that I like to do in my personal mastery practice. And the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is taking responsibility. Um, take responsibility not for the actions or the things that you have had to endure that other people need to play a role in. But when there's two people involved, there is some sort of responsibility. It's not taking accountability for other people, but take responsibility for yourself. Take responsibility for the fact that you got in a relationship showing up from your shadow because you had stuff to heal or you repressed or suppressed all of who you are or you were not being authentic and true because maybe you didn't even know yourself. And maybe you made decisions in jobs and um, many different areas, finances, because again, you didn't, you didn't align, you didn't stay aligned with what you wanted to see in your life. Take responsibility for that. Take responsibility for the fact that you want better in your life, but when you actually are supposed to do the things that you need to do, you take, you don't take action. Or take responsibility for the fact that you know all of the data. You are super smart. I know you're brilliant, but you don't put any of that knowledge into action. And so you still have the same negative thoughts that you had yesterday and the day before and last year and the year before. Or maybe you just have the same thoughts, the same mentality, the same mindset that you had yesterday or the day before or the month before or the year before. Take responsibility for the fact that there's some healing, some growth, some shadow work that needs to happen for you to become better. And I think that that will help you on your way. There's a couple of hacks that I'm going to leave you with. Um, the natal chart. If you have not had a natal chart, this is the number one reason why I use natal charts in personal mastery practice. I do not call myself astro an astrologer. I call myself somebody that is focused on personal mastery that uses every tool at my disposal in order to help myself and help my clients. So natal charts show you exactly your positive sides, your negative sides, your weaknesses, your strengths, your opportunities on your threats so that you don't have to guess about where you might have pitfalls and challenges. And you can look at all of these different things and you can ride the wave of opportunity, but the parts that are threats or that are weaknesses, you can strengthen them, transcend them and have an awareness about them so that you can actively learn how to move forward to gain more wisdom and evolve and call in more abundance in your life. So if you have not got a natal chart, I would encourage you to get it because it takes a lot of the guessing, the guesswork out of trying to figure out who you are in your life. And then secondly is personal mastery coaching, private coaching. And that's because you have someone, you have me that has a framework that can help guide you step by step through this work. So you're not doing it alone. And because I have a process that is efficient, effective, you guys, I have clients that have done <laughs> like I look at them and I'm like, why, why can't I do that? I got some more shadow work to do. But anyway, um, 
the coaching is just something that really gives you a container to actually do the work with somebody that has done it before, um, somebody that is trained to do it, me, somebody that is especially trained not only in just saying I'm a coach, a certified coach, certified tarot reader, astrologer, um, psychology degree, like all of the things to help you to be able to move forward more positively and transcend some of these limiting beliefs and conditioning that hold you back and stop you from living a new life and being stuck where you are, stuck in the patterns and the mindset that aren't really helping you create optimal results in your life. So do you guys have any questions? Any questions about shadow work, about how you can optimally integrate shadow work in your life? You guys not always give you a lot of information. This is something to really sit with. You may have to watch it again, but this is one of the most important things that you need to do in your life if you want to embrace not only a more spiritual side of your life, but also a more practical side where you're doing the inner work to create those outer changes. So I don't see any questions for this teaching. I will keep this up for a couple of days, but this the replay will not be available after that because again, this is a, a special teaching that I'm giving to you because I want you to see some of the stuff that will go on in the membership as far as taking this concept and working with them a step further, taking them through the seven seeds of discord that actually make shadow work or make your shadow stronger, make it take over. Like uh, we, we plan to go a little bit more deep in some of the other offerings that I have, but I wanted to give you this because it is the exact information and base that I use for clients that come into those different containers like the membership and the private coaching. All right, so I will talk to you later. Jenny, I might actually pop into Ruby's group because I wanted to talk a little bit about this. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. If not, I'm going to post something in her group uh, by the end of the week about all this. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Oh, and if you do have any questions about coaching, I left uh, what, my website where you can go and look at coaching and see if it's right for you. So you can check that out. Yoshigasintuition.com forward slash coaching. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.